Welcome to Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from Central California with your hosts Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting video worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and broadcasting audio on the Dark Matter Network at ArtBell.com. Are you ready to witness something that you cannot explain? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Paranormal Central. Coming to you live somewhere in the Nevada Triangle. But we are stationed in California. So break out the map and see where we are. My name is Jeffrey Gonzalez. I am your host. Thank you for showing up today wherever you may be around the world. Broadcasting on Livestream.com and on the Dark Matter Network at ArtBell.com. Welcome, everybody. To my right, my co-host, that would be to your left, Mr. Alan Thomas. Hello, everyone. And womaning the board somewhere in the corner, because she has been a bad, bad girl. Emerald Bania. That sounded all bad, Jeff. Yeah. That was all bad. <laughs> but hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> all right, we're going to have some fun tonight. Um, our Squatch reporter, Danny Valdram, is out of commission. He is on the couch recuperating. Because he had a long week. His daughter, one and only daughter, got married yesterday. So we want to say congratulations to Paisley and the family. And um, that's it. No more daughter. No, actually, I think they're moving. Uh, well, she's stationed out of uh, somewhere in Oregon or somewhere else. I think she, she's in the Coast Guard, you guys. Really that? She's in the Coast Guard. So that's awesome. So, All right. Uh, we are going to have an author on tonight. Her name is Heidi Hollis. You might know who she is. She has written several books, but the main focus on tonight would be the Hat Man, Shadow People. Maybe some of you have seen one. Maybe so. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that tonight. We're and uh, you know we're gonna get her on in about ten minutes. So if you are watching us at livestream.com, thank you very much. If you are listening to us on the Dark Matter Network at artbell.com, welcome. If this is your first time, where have you been? We've been doing this a long time. And I know this is like probably going to be the first time you've heard of us, but hopefully this won't be your last and you'll stick around. Our show is two hours long. Tonight we will be two hours long, but usually uh, what's going to happen is um, next month sometime we're going to be moving to a new studio and we're going to be doing three hours. And um, that's going to be cool. Uh, you know, we have a lot of stuff that really uh, we, that we talk about, um, and I can't wait for that. So, um, and the, another reason why we're moving over to the new studio is we have been given the green light here in the central part of California, which is probably over two million homes. Uh, we're going to get our own half-hour, thirty-minute show on TV talk show so what you are watching right now on live stream is going to be transferred over to televisions but in a bigger set and um, we're gonna have you know just like just like Jimmy Kimmel and all those guys our own in-house live band as a matter of fact you probably heard them bringing us into our show they are called possessed tranquility and they are an awesome band as a matter of fact they just released their album and it is on iTunes go and buy it and as a matter of fact they actually wrote a song for our show called the unexplained and that's what you heard coming in and that's what you will hear going out so go take a listen and uh, all their songs are really good Uh, i believe it's only 10 bucks for the album go to itunes again the band is called possessed tranquility so yeah our set is being built and if you are a fan a friend on facebook you probably heard me rant 
like crazy this morning, uh, which is kind of funny because I got over 105 likes just on that. Um, you know, they, they were putting our set together last night and they applied wallpaper. Well, you know what? The roof was put on the set um, and nowhere in the forecast it stated that we were going to have any rain. So therefore, they did not put any covers on the roof. Therefore, the wallpaper was placed, and guess what happened at 5 o'clock this morning? It rained cats and dogs, and I was furious. And as you can tell, if you are a friend, of, a friend of mine on Facebook, you can listen to basically what I said to all the meteorologists around there. <laughs> so um, I was bummed. So now they are redoing it right now as we speak, and I think it's going to turn out a lot better than the wallpaper itself. Uh, the uh, person in charge, Ariel, is actually related to me, and uh, she has... Uh, graduated from FIDM, it's F-I-D-M, that's college in LA where all of the people go to to learn set designs and movie making, all that kind of stuff. Well, she graduated, graduated there with honors. So she's out there right now, busting her behind, putting up the new, now I don't want to say wallpaper, but new backdrop, which I think is going to be really cool looking. So I can't wait for that. Um, in about seven minutes, we're going to get on the phone and talk to Heidi Hollis, and we are going to get into Shadow People and the Hat Man. And talk about a lot of stuff that surround that certain subject, which is just not shadow people on the hat man, because there's a lot of stuff that surround that. Um, now I know she has a, also a talk show somewhere out there, and actually Alan was on there at one time, I think about a month ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Talked about Bigfoot. About Bigfoot, and you know what? Heidi Hollis also says that she actually seen Bigfoot a couple times, I think. So we're going to talk about that as well. So we have a really long, um, we have a lot of stuff to talk about with her. We're going to have her on until about six thirty. 645 hour time and then what I want to do is talk about some stuff that we didn't get to talk about last week that I want to you know basically show you and tell you guys about because it's really been really bugging me and I think it's really cool and I'm actually going to open up tonight about a certain subject um, that I've never actually told anybody ever in my life except my wife and uh, I recently told her about it and she went hmm now that's creepy so I want to basically open up and tell you guys all about what just recently I found out. And I think you guys are going to trip out on this. So, Okay, so we, since we don't have no squatch report, um, I want to talk a, a little bit more about um, upcoming, I don't know, upcoming episodes and stuff like that. Um, in our show, in our TV show, um, I'm hoping that it's going to go national at the beginning of next year. I think it's just going to, right now, it's just going to hit in the California area. Um, and I think we're going to work out a deal right now where it's going to be shown here in central parts of California. But that's on the Fox network. I didn't tell you that. It's going to be either on the Fox network or the CW. Or both. Or both. Because when we had the pilot played last time, they actually we're showed it both. at both networks, which is like, woo. Um that was actually kind of cool. So instead of 2 million people, probably more than that actually saw if you were watching at that certain time. Um, so, you know, the Fox Network is going to run it. And I'm hoping that it's going to get out to the rest of you guys who are actually watching and listening to us on the East Coast in the central part of California, or the United States, actually. Um, now, and I know you guys who are watching and listening to us around the world, because I know we have a lot of fans out there. Um, I think what's going to happen is we're going to probably end up putting them on YouTube after they air here on TV. Um, and uh, that way you guys can go to it. Now, you had an idea about Roku with that? Yeah. The, um, I don't know if, if everybody knows what that is, but we're, I'm thinking about building a Roku channel, right? And then the people with Roku could actually tune in and watch all the shows. Right. Yeah, and I'll even be putting on. We I have like five years of shows yeah. in in our computer, and I'm going to try to figure out how to put the music, you know, and mm -hmm. okay. edit it all up and put them in there. But I will have all the ones, you know, the last year or so. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, I actually started this. Oh my god, in 2008, 2007, 2008. So we're talking almost seven years ago. Holy mackerel! I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah, a long time. So. Um, you know, we just started on the Dark Matter Network at artbell.com just in December. So we've been on the artbell.com websites uh, for now in nine months. Yeah. But prior to that, I was on live stream five years. Five years, least, okay. Yeah. Uh, so there are a lot of shows that are 
recorded on hard drive, you guys. And we had a lot of them, and there was a lot of good ones in there, too. A lot of good ones. A lot of good ones on there. And, and then if you, you know, all you guys really want to go back, we, uh, one of our viewers found, you can find them on Block Talk still under SPS. Oh, my gosh. Singer Paranormal Society. That's when Emerald and I were, like, uh, around in the kitchen table and uh, on the laptop with yeah. earphones and microphones on the earphones, totally rookie-ish, I mean. <laughs> and uh, we were doing our talk show. And that was like you know? seven years ago. That was a long time ago. I don't ago. even remember that. Huh? <laughs> I don't even remember. You don't remember that? <laughs> remember I'm all, sick, you know, remember. I, yeah, I think that's all the time that you were on drugs and all that no, kind of stuff. No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. She was sniffing her soup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Now, if, you, if you happen to hear... <laughs> <laughs> Emerald uh, eating soup or the, over there. Or the Nipples, that's yeah. Me. Emerald is a little sick and under the weather, so she's like munching on some soup over there. What is it? What are you eating? Chicken noodle, of course. Chicken noodle. I would expect menudo or chicken tor- or tortilla soup or something. <laughs> You're heck a racist. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. That's you, li- I've heard you say you oh, eat menudo. That's amazing. Yeah, but okay. So you have to understand. My last name is Gonzalez, so <laughs> I do eat menudo and I love it. And Emerald, like, when Emerald told me she eats menudo, I freaked out and go, "Really? Oh, it's so good. I don't. I've never heard of women actually liking menudo." My only. mom makes. I'll have to bring you some from my. Well, mom. thank you very much. It's like, how long have we known each other, and you never brought me menudo from your mom? She only. She makes it not even once a year. Like, like during New Year's or something? Christmas. Christmas? I'll bring you some. Okay, you better. Anyway. Or else you're fired and you're you not going to make any more enough. money. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you bring it. We'll give you a raise. We'll give you oh, a raise. Okay. <laughs> um, and you know what? Uh, Emerald sent out all the books last week. So I'm hoping that everybody has gotten them by now. And I apologize um, for the the long wait You know, for me sending them. It's just I am really... You know, swamp. swamp. He is. He is swamp. I am very, very much I mean, swamp. He works for a living too. Yes. You know. Hopefully, one of these days, I won't be able to work where I work. Mm-hmm. And for those who don't know where I work, I work for AT and T Telephone. I am a telephone technician. I climb telephone poles and I do all that for a living. So um, that's why when we go out bigfooting, I'm actually gaffing up trees and putting our motion detectors 15, 20 feet up in the sky and aiming them down, so that way the bigfoot don't see them. And they, they probably hear them anyways and smell them anyways. But uh, at least and watch us put them up there. <laughs> watch them put them up, <laughs> up there. So, so all right. You know what? It's uh, let's go ahead and give Heidi a call, and uh, we're gonna get into some cool stuff tonight. And uh, that would be the Hat Man, Hat People, and Shadow People, and a little bit of religion thrown in there. I think yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. And that's gonna tick off Emerald. But you know what? Doesn't tick me off. Okay. It's a debatable subject. That's right. That, <laughs> that's what we're going to get into. Debatable subjects here. All right. She's getting in. So, um, yeah. Oh. So, I can't wait. So, here we go. We're going to put her on. Okay. Didn't she having a good time talking to Heidi on the phone over there? Uh, Heidi. Huh? She got me. Yeah. What would she say? <laughs> she, she goes, hello, Domino's Pizza. Number. Really? <laughs> 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 Heidi, you there? I sure am. How are you guys? How's it going, Hi, Heidi? Heidi. <laughs> the wrong, wrong number that was funny you should have said Domino's pizza or straw head pizza or something that's good all right so how's it going Heidi life is grand everything kind of crashed just before I got here but I, I'm okay now <laughs> what do you mean crashed my my phone line thing was plugged in wrong I'm like why is my phone dead I'm like hold on uh-huh. <laughs> so I had to rewire everything it was backwards wow that's all good Okay, well, it's all good. And you are actually, we hear you loud and clear. Yeah, that, good. It's, it sounds really good. So that's awesome. Whatever you're doing, don't stop. Just keep talking the way you are. So, okay. All right. You guys are a little bit quiet for me, but it's, it's okay. Oh, oh well, I'll, well, I'll talk really close. So how's that? Uh, let's see, I'm trying to see. I've been looking forward to this show. I've been waiting and waiting. Yeah. And finally. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about the reason why you're here. Um, you're an author of many books. Indeed. Uh, well, name them, please. I have them listed here, but I just want you to go ahead and list them for me. Oh, boy. Is this a quiz? It's, a, it's a quiz, and if you fail, we hang up on you. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay. Okay, I got one. Um, the Secret War, which was the first book written on Shadow People. Okay. Um, and, and then I have Jesus is No Joke, okay. which is based on Jesus Encounters uh, that I personally had, though I was a skeptic of such things. And we will talk about that tonight. Uh, yep, and Picture Prayers, which is a different method of prayer, as was shown to me by an angelic presence, I guess you could say. Wow, so, cool. Sounds cool. Yeah, so that's that's another fun one. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I, I have uh, The Hat Man, 
which is my one of my more recent books. Well, actually, is my most recent, and um, and I also have diary blog of the Fickle Finders, which is a graphic novel I cartooned um, that is based on faith to help kids. Uh, Kind of get a grasp on it, although I've only heard from grown men who like comics, so it's okay though. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, is it kid friendly that particular book? Or it is kid friendly, okay. and I've actually geared it towards uh, you know anybody who wants to get their faith up a little bit, um, because when you're standing in the face of evil things, how else are you going to combat it? So, sure. I'm like you know, let's start from the ground up and uh, get the kids perking up, and I, I have an adult version coming out uh, quite soon I would gather it's done probably in a couple of weeks I'll, I might just toss it out there we'll see it's called the other F word <laughs> <laughs> okay what do, we, do, I have to, do I have to put my finger on the mute button here really quick or no no I don't swear I'm what, a Christian what is, what is the, the other <laughs> F she swears you don't got to put it on your finger on the button what is, no, the, what is the other F word well it's faith of course oh okay sure Okay, just want to make sure, because right now, Art Bell's people were like this. <gasps> okay. Oh, he's like holding this oh, finger over the button. Yeah, because they're like, yeah. whoa. Okay, we're cool. And by the way, I do swear, so there. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Okay, well, th then you'll fit perfectly in the show. Well, you know that <laughs> okay, all, all guys are like kids, too. That's why you're getting all the all the guys on that one book, because we're just, yeah, well, guys are know, just a bunch of big kids. That's it. Yeah, it, it's yeah. cool, though. I mean, it's like, you know, I was hoping it would appeal to adults as well, though I did have an adult version coming out that is more... Um, I mean, it has comics and silly stuff in there, too, but it's also about our silly approaches to trying to get faith down really good and mm -hmm. trying to figure it out and all of our flubs and flops and what now, goes into that. Now, you are not a religious person. Nope. I mean, what changed you? What happened? Uh, you know, I was raised, you know, Christian, and, uh, you know, it was just kind of one of those things you did on Sunday, and it was a mini vacation for my parents. Um, so it was just something that we did, like, darn it, you know, I've got to do this on Sundays. But, you know, I, I'd ex I experienced so many paranormal things, though, uh, growing up that I just kind of started, you know, looking more towards that as being more of a reality than anything. Um, so it was, it, it was shocking to myself uh, as a young adult, you know, it's like my friends that were, you know, still religious going to church on Sundays. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. I, probably if I stepped in a church, I might start on fire. I don't know, but say <laughs> prayer for me anyways, you know, just for fun. I, I mean, I had my faith in God. Right. Um, but it was more, how can you say, it was more of a, a mem memorized things, you know. Um, so it was, it was it was in there. It was in me. But um, what actually happened to me, um, well, I was still a college student, it, and I had just, like, put on... A, finished the, the, the Secret War book, my very first book, on the shadow people, positive and negative alien beings and whatnot were in that book as well. And um, I was just putting the finishing touches on it when I had my first encounter with Jesus. Totally unexpected, not asked for, nothing of the sort. Um, it, it really was a, a tremendous experience for myself because, um, I mean, I wasn't looking for it. I really wasn't, and and I was actually such a skeptic of such things happening. You know, people were reporting seeing Jesus in their bowl of soup to a tree trunk. I was like, really? You know, the, I, I I literally put in my book, The Secret War, oh gosh, forgive me for this, I put, if Jesus were around, I probably would have seen him by now. I did. I wrote that in the book. <laughs> Yeah, that was bad. Well, um, like you, something was wrong with you too when he showed up too, and he and he fixed it, didn't he? Emerald's cracking up over something here. like that. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you guys. What was that? So something was wrong with you too, and when he showed up, he fixed it. Or, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, actually, um, you know, I'll, I'll go. Ahead, I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit more of the juicier details. So, like on this first you. encounter. And, and I'll tell you about, you know, what, what he did for me, because um, I saw him four times in total. But this this very first encounter was mind-blowing to me and, and to such an extent that uh, it changed everything for me, absolutely changed everything for me. And, and I was lucky that he came when he did, because I was just about to put that book out with that quote in there saying, you know, if Jesus were around, I probably would have seen him by now. And and I think he saw I was about to make a huge mistake and potentially mislead a lot of people. And uh, I was lucky I got to got a chance to rewrite that chapter <laughs> before I published the book. But um, but anyway, so I was I was in college, and I worked uh, in a bakery. So like 5 a.m. till noon, and 
and I, I came, I would always come home and, you know, take a nap after work. <laughs> it was just, you know, it's too darn early. So I told my college roommate, you know, turn your TV down. I'm going to go take a nap. It's like, okay. And it was a, a summer day and um, went into my bedroom and just went to, you know, lay down on my bed. And this is just as uh, dramatic as it sounds. I, I laid on my bed and it was as if I fell straight through it. Wow. And it was, it was so shocking to me. I'm like, whoa, you know, mm-hmm. you know what, what happened here? I felt through all in the bed. I'm like, well, hold on. I'm not in my bedroom. I didn't fall off the bed. And I'm looking around, and it was it was so strange to me because I, I what I saw was a rendition of the outside of the front of my parents' home. And um, I'm like, okay, Heidi, somehow you drove to your parents' house. You don't remember doing it. And this guy started walking towards me at a distance. I'm like, oh, this family friend named Quincy, he was going to meet up. Yeah, yeah. You, I was totally trying to figure it out why this whole scenario was playing out for me. And um, it didn't take long for this gentleman to get uh, even not even really close. And I just, I, it, recognition hit me so hard. I just, uh, me being the silly person that I am, uh, humor is my best friend, and I just put my face in my hands like, oh my God, <laughs> is that him, you know? And this man walks up to me, and I've got my face in my hands still, and I'm like, oh boy, you know, why is he here? And I heard him say hello, as if he was going to talk about the weather or something in the next breath or something, and... And I still have my face in my hands. I'm like, well, hello. And um, he goes, do you know who I am? If you knew who I was, you would not hesitate to say it. And, oh, I get goosebumps every time I talk about it. Wow. And I, I started to pull my, my hands from my face, and I'm like, well, well, well you're, 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 you're Jesus. And I don't speak Spanish, by the way, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said Jesus. And... Uh, as I took my, my hands away from my eyes and I looked up at him, I saw just the most magnificent sight I've ever seen in my life. Long white robe, bright like sunlight coming from behind his face, and his face was shadowed. And I was just in absolute awe. Like, ah! Like, you know, you see those movies where you think you hear music. <laughs> And just the impact hitting me, and I mean, he started speaking about his life, what he was aiming to do, and how so much needed to be done. And and, and as he's speaking, I'm like getting images, I'm hearing words, uh, but I, it was more feelings, and and though I could hear his voice speaking as well, and uh, I'm like still my silly self going, what is going on here? I'm looking around. I'm like. This is happening, Heidi. You're really here. You are really here. Wow. And I'm like, I looked to my side and I left. And I'm like, why is the ground so close to me? And I'm like, I exclaim in my head. I'm like, I'm on my knees. I don't even remember going on my knees. And wow. and I guess he must have been like, what is she doing? Because <laughs> he got quiet. And I'm like, literally like a kid getting caught passing notes in class or something. I like looked up from the ground. I looked up at him. I'm like, um... And I, I'm stuttering because I'm just so enamored. And I'm like, well, well, well what do you want me to do, you know? And and uh, I stood up and he said, well, first you need to show us some things. And I'm like, us? I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's talking about his daddy. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is really going on. And um, he started talking, and I knew that uh, there, was, it, there was information being told to me, but it was as if a glass went between us. I could see his lips moving, but I, I wasn't hearing the words, but I know he was like putting it there with me still. And he told me that I needed to finish writing my book and not to be concerned with what others thought to know that he'll be there to give me the words. And, um, and I knew that he had to go. And, uh, I was so like, oh my gosh, think of something smart to ask. <laughs> you know, he's leaving now, you know, like, <laughs> and he starts to walk away to disappear into this wall. And I'm like, well, what is my real name? And I heard him laugh lightly. 
and he said, I love you very much, Ailea. And, oh, I get goosebumps. And, wow. <laughs> and I'm just like, Ailea, 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 I've got to remember that, i got to remember that, i got to remember that. And uh, it, it was it was such a, um, a tremendous experience. Like, I started to come back to my body, and the love trickles that come from him had totally overwhelmed me to the point where I didn't want to move. It felt so good. I just didn't want that, that love soup to go away. And uh, I, I, I was laying there in my, my bed just like, oh, this is beautiful, you know. And, and, you know, I have to say, too, a lot of people, when I've shared this experience and um, have read my book, Jesus is No Joke, um, they're like, well, you know, how do you know it was him? And, and I tell people, I could have been blind and seen it was him because every cell in my body screamed his name. There was no mistake in who this person was that stood before me. That, so, that, um, you know, absolutely like... uh, mind-blowing. But it, that was the first experience. There was more that happened immediately after that, but um, what, uh, what you mentioned in, in regard to uh, a healing that he just, he's done for me. Right, just, right. Yeah, just, uh, you know, for 12 years I suffered from um, ulcerative colitis, which is similar to Crohn's, but affects a different part of the digestive system. And um, absolutely a horrible disease. And, uh, you know, I was, you know, it, it can increase your chances of, of cancer and all sorts of complications and issues. And uh, he showed up. And he didn't come physically, but he, it, like like uh, me seeing his white robe and, and everything, but in a in a light, his presence was there. I recognized it. it, it it's, there's no denying his presence. It just isn't. It, it's love and the name and everything that encompasses who he is uh, hit me. And I propped myself up on my elbows, you know, my bed. I'm like, whoa, there's a bright light in my room. And it was like a ray of sunlight was hitting my feet. I'm like, oh, it's him. <laughs> like, because his, his presence is blowing me away. It's and amazing. I watch <laughs> the sunlight go from my feet and, and break off and start spinning, going up my legs and started spinning in my stomach area. And I'm like, and when it hit my stomach area, <laughs> um, all I can compare the feeling that happened when it hit my stomach was. You know, when you're on a hammock in, in, the, in the summer, swinging, and, like, his love pushed me so just, whoop, right out of my body, and I was like like a hammock that had turned upside down, and I'm looking at myself laying there. And uh, I'm like, whoa, you know, whoa, what is he doing? I'm, like, wondering, and I'm like, I got a better view now. I'm out of my body. I'm watching him. And I thought of, is he healing me? And... It's just so strange. Like, you know, us as human beings, we, we feel so not worthy. And the, the and other things are playing in my head, and I'm just like, nah, he wouldn't do that for me. You know, it was my next thought. The second I thought that, the second I doubted him and what he was doing, the light turned off. I slammed that right back into my body. And I sat up, and I'm, like, patting my stomach, like, whoa, 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 where'd he go? What happened? You know, what's what's going on here? You know, why did he leave? Why did he come? You know, I would have so many questions. I was still very sick for a long period of time following this. And I'm like, this, that just doesn't make sense. He didn't say anything. He didn't even show up where I saw his robe or anything. But it was him. I had no doubt about that. And um, to make a long story short, uh, I, I ran a, a UFO and paranormal discussion group for a very long time uh, in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area um, out of one of the libraries. And, you know, you get so many interesting people that come through, and, and uh, a lady had come through seeking healing from aliens, like asking how can she conjure up aliens to heal her, you know, because she had so many health issues. And somebody, uh, well, you know, i got to back up a second. I had gone to my doctor prior to this, and um, my doctor said, for the first time in 12 years, I don't see the disease. I'm like, what? What do you mean you don't see the disease? He's like, I don't understand. He's like, 
maybe we misdiagnosed you or I don't know. And I'm like, uh uh-uh, uh, no, I've been sick for 12 years. There's no way. And I was still sick at the time. So this lady comes to the meeting and, and uh, she's speaking this, and somebody perked up, you know, to, to respond to this lady seeking healing from an alien. And I said, dear, only Jesus heals. And a light went off in my head, and I'm like, that's what he did. And I spoke up that second, and I said, you know what, guys? I think Jesus healed me. And everybody just stopped and turned and looked at me like, what are you talking about, Heidi? And I'm like, and I told him about my experience. And do you know, from that moment on, I never had another symptom. But I was sick up until that point because I had doubted him that whole time. It took for me to acknowledge what he had already done. Right. That, that's so amazing. What, what was the symptoms of that disease that you had? Uh, it's stomach cramps. It's running to the bathroom. It's feeling nauseous all the time. Uh, extreme pain, abdominal yeah. pain. Um, it's very much like Crohn's, and it's, it causes ulcers on your legs, ulcers through your intestines. Um, in fact, they, they were um, trying to dual diagnose me as having Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. There is no cure for it. The cure is removing your innards, yeah. essentially. So wow. um, it's just a um, pretty, pretty brutal disease. I'm jealous. Totally. <laughs> totally jealous. I, I want to I wanna see him. You know, I, I talk to him all the time. You'd think he would like stop in, you know. <laughs> so, so why do you think he came down and spoke to you? Is it is it because of the book? I mean, obviously, you think it was because of the book, um, and the things well, you were about to write in the book. You know, I I am you know I'm nobody special. I'm, I've always said you know a lot of people pray for healing and it just doesn't happen, and we're like, darn it, you know what's going on. You know, I, I I know that he knew what I would do with the information, that I, I'm not a person to sit on things and hoard it uh, and keep it to myself if I think it can help somebody else. So um, I, I've met so many people over the years who do such things. It just it crushes me. People that have had the most incredible experiences, whether by aliens or, you know, near-death experiences or angel encounters, Jesus encounters and whatnot, and they keep it to themselves, and I'm like, wow, I just, I, I cannot do that. I, You know, we're on this planet to help each other along, and uh, if I can help in, in any small way, and for crying out loud, Jesus stopped by and asked me to do him a favor. I wasn't going <laughs> to sit on it. I would hate right. to have to answer for that, but I just, uh, I, I know that he knew what I would do with it. Okay, so with that incident happening to you um you know and i told you when we were texting each other this morning that you know i was brought up catholic and you know very 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 religious family even to this day and when people around you friends relatives they know where you came from what you did when you were a kid uh and all of a sudden now you are talking about aliens and you're talking about UFOs and, you know, shadow people, demons, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, people think that all of the above has to do with evil, demons. Um, and, and you know, people were, were, were telling me, you know, you're, why, why are you getting involved in this evil stuff? And that's the way my friends all you know think about the subject, um, and and because they just don't think all of the stuff that we talk about on this show and what you talk about is for real, and it's all got to be the devil, it's all got to be evil, um, and and you know, you talk about shadow people, you talk about aliens, and that's where I want to go, you know, with this tonight. I mean, obviously, you've written several books, and 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 all of the above is involved here so with you writing that book um what do you think you know these aliens these shadow people all of this are if there is a god and a jesus and a higher above what is all this then then that 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 it's surrounding us you know if i had 
a black crayon, they would all get the same color. <laughs> I would just <laughs> color it all in. Yep. Negative aliens, negative shadow people, you know, all of that. It, I, I mean, it's to me, if something is negative, they're related, um, no matter what it is that people call it. And, you know, and, and something that, that I have to say, too, when, when it comes to friends, family, and naysayers, you know, flapping their gums about things they really don't know uh, about what's what's fully going on. You know, I, I used to be so like, um, no, guys, you really got to get this stuff, you know. And, and then I started realizing, it's like, look, I know how to clear a room and scare people to death so they won't sleep for weeks if I wanted to with some of the stories <laughs> I've got. But they're not learning anything. They're closing, they're closing their eyes and covering their ears and, and running out of the room. But I, I found when I started treating the subjects, uh, all of these subjects, as I would any other topic with, you know, my sense of humor, being who I am, you know, using myself as an example, um, you know, and, and not backing down. I mean, so they make fun of me. So what? They make fun of for worse things. So it's like, I really, it really doesn't bother me to that extent. And, and I feel sorry um, for the people that really push their agenda to, you know, try to put you down for what it is that you do. I, and I, But I don't get angry with them because I, I, I know one day they'll be <laughs> knocking on my door, which has happened quite a bit, um, you know, saying, oh, my gosh, I've had something happen. Well, you were right. But, you know, it, it's, it's all about, you know, helping people. And it's not about, uh, you know, self-serving and, and, you know, trying to say, well, I know more than you do. No, it's like when I treated these things as, as a as a regular topic and and not paranormal but as a normal thing that's when I saw eyebrows being raised questions being asked people learning things so and I that's that's why I like to approach the things the way that I do but um you asked about these beings um when it comes to the abducting alien beings when it comes to shadow people when it comes to the hat man uh they all recognize the name of Jesus. What does that tell me? That tells me, like I said, all negative things are related. If if Jesus and God are of no importance in the midst of all this paranormal smack going on, <laughs> that wouldn't work. But it's happened again and again. And I, you know, I don't know if I was one of the first to be out there talking on the topic uh, in regard to the Secret War book, my first book, um, talking about positive and negative alien beings and how some spoke of God and how the others ran when they heard Jesus' name, you know, and how they were at, in conflict. And it's like, wow, is this, the, is this the battle that's been spoken of and written of in, in biblical texts, um, you know, that's... You know, this is what's going down. This is going on in the skies already. So I, I think that, uh, you know, if people take some of the definitions away, the, some of the titles away, alien, you know, put demon, call it an ant. I don't care what you call it. Call it, you know, <laughs> I won't say Bigfoot because he's sometimes nice, isn't he? <laughs> but call it whatever you want. As long as you, you know, prepare yourself that things don't present themselves as you are suspecting they might or you hope that they might, you know. Um so, I mean, I just kind of live each day and take each day as it comes uh, with some of the things that people perceive and, you know, try to give them something to think about, not to bash them, not to put them down for what they've been raised to know to be correct, because religion is necessary to get to a faith level that's comfortable. I'm not a religious person, but I I, I love Jesus and God and I, I religiously, if that makes sense. It, when I hear religious, I, I think of going to church every Sunday. No, I don't do that, but boy, my faith is right there in that Bible. <laughs> right. You know, I had a call about four days ago from somebody who called my hotline and just wanted to talk about uh, something that happened to him. Um, and it was when he was younger and he was asleep and he was being abducted. And he saw that it was an alien of some type and it had they had had hoods on and at one time after I think the second time he started to say the the name Jesus please help me please help me and they vanished and they did not come back and his life turned around after that he uh, and that, and then he because he wanted to tell me 
that, you know what, all I said was, Jesus, please help me, please help me, get rid of him, get rid of him. And he told me they got angry when he said that name. And, I and, love it. And, 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 you know, he actually, he's never seen our show. All right. He called, he went on the internet, Googled 24 hour help paranormal hotline and got my number and called me. Um, and then he told me the story because, you know, we have actually talked about Alan's, you know, what happened to Alan and just other people's incidents in general. And it's like he was actually describing one of our past incident that we you know assisted on or helped on or talked to somebody who had the same thing happen to him and then i told him well then have you been listening to our show and he goes what show and then i had to explain to him what we did in the whole nine yards so this is not the first time we have heard of this and it's you know um you know people think that it doesn't work but the way it's sounding to me it does it oh, absolutely God. does work. So yeah. like you said, if it if saying the name of Jesus gets rid of these aliens, well then there's got to be a good and an evil involved here someplace. You know what though? That's I don't know sure. if it would be just the name. I think you would have to have the belief behind right. it cuz like I said earlier on past shows, if you don't have the belief in whatever, mm -hmm. cuz I'm atheist, I right. believe in something though, but you have to have that willpower because that's all it is. It's willpower. So if you put your belief in something. Well, it, but what happens like, you know, because he was trying to fight them off any which way he could and using whatever he had at the disposal, his mind, his will, and he couldn't get rid of them. Yeah. But he stopped fighting and said one word, boom, <laughs> and they are gone. Well, that's my thing, though. I mean, because we're people like we have a set strength level we have that uh, we know what we're capable of but when you put some when you put your belief into something like that something that you truly believe is stronger than you that's but he thing too. but he again was never um a, a religious person per se he didn't go to church or whatever he but he still called him out but that's but that like you know like he, the back of his mind like like heidi you know, she wasn't a religious person. She wasn't going to church. This guy wasn't going to church. He wasn't reading the Bible. He wasn't watching church things on Sundays. He was your regular guy watching football on Sunday, going to whatever. And he says one word, and it all stopped. See, I'm just saying, because that never worked for me when I was going through my stuff. Right. Um. Well, may I? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it has something to do with like authority. Like, it, you have to have the you have you have to have the authority of it. Like a cop, like a cop has a badge everyone recognizes, so he has authority, right? But if I went out and say I was, you know, like I was going to stop traffic, and I ran out there, these people would just run me over because I don't have the authority that a cop does. But he could go out in the middle of the freeway and just hold his hand up, and they'll see the uniform and everything, and they'll stop. You know what I mean? So when you're like a little kid, you. It mostly the authority would be your parents and stuff like that. Oh and, no, I was older. You know. I wasn't. You, you know, I'll I'll say this when it comes to uh, what you're mentioning there. I've had people write me say, "I've done sage. I've said in Jesus' name, get out, God, uh, get out." I told everything. I did it, and I I went through the whole ritual, and it didn't work. I've I've had people tell me that. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm. I used to really just think I would, you know, wow, what is going on here? And then I thought of this movie. I, I don't recall what it was. Um, it was with vampires, and this guy held up a cross to a vampire, and the vampire laughed and took the cross out of his hand and said, you got to have faith for that to work, yeah. you know? And and I, I'm like, that's what people are lacking. And that's, that's why I really took the angle that I did. You know, here I'm talking about all this negative stuff, and I'm like, how do you combat it? You do have to have something behind your words. But words have weight to them. Oh, my. Um, do they? Um, the, the second half of um, uh, the first Jesus encounter I had, I, I learned that lesson when something negative came at me, um, trying to get me to denounce what I just saw, to get the words out, to denounce it. So words do have weight, but belief, and, and like you're saying, the authority. You know, people, I, I, I imagine people like, like throwing paper cups at the demon, you know, like 
this is their Jesus name they're throwing, you know, but when you got the kitchen sink of faith, well, you're going to leave a, a mark on them. <laughs> Yep, I, 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 yeah, I mean, um, um, I, you know, I believe there's a higher power. I believe yeah. there's good and evil, um, and uh, you know, it, it, it I it, have it, prayed. It's testable. Yeah, it is. I mean, we go it and is. do it. Yeah, and, and uh, use it, and it, and get results. Yes, and that's yeah. what is telling me that there is something going on with good and evil um you, you know like, like 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 emerald just said well actually several times ago but she says you know you can't have bad without good you have to have balance you have to have balance um so uh, you know i i i'm just saying wh why you know why do people certain people witness what they witness you know, like Jesus, and, and and if if that's that that's who you met, and like Alan says as well that he met Jesus because you know he died a couple times on on the surgery on surgery, um, and I and you know I would love to experience that. I'm hoping one day I do. Hopefully not when I die, but you know you know hopefully sooner than that. Um, you know I, I again I have faith. Uh, I, I'm, tr I've always tried to be a good person. Um, and, and I would like to have that feeling that you encountered and the feeling like Alan encountered, not wanting to come back where he was at. Well, you, you, know. you know, it's amazing. Like, um, Heidi has this group on Facebook. Um, I think it's called paranormal pledge, right? Yeah. And everybody can go and join that by the way, paranormal pledge. It's, but only... I never realized how many people have the negative um, encounters. Like when I, and even in my own family, you know, I, I started like sharing some of the stories with my family, like that I read in the Paranormal Pledge. I mean, it was blowing me away how many people see this Hat Man thing. And then I started finding out that my sister-in-law saw it and my son was seeing it when he was like five and i mean th this thing is all this guy gets around you know what i mean i mean really gets around and it, yeah, it, like, yeah. i couldn't believe it and and heidi's created this group and i mean it, there's story after story after story it's amazing okay oh yeah and that's that's actually even part of another group, a uh, Hat Man and Shadow People, a uh, Shadow People and Hat Man Experiencers group on Facebook, right, and yeah. then ParanormalPledge.com. You can also, um, yeah, I have two, a couple of them. And Heidi yeah, Hall is it, it is mind blowing and it's it's heartbreaking. Yes. I mean it. Almost every day I get emails from people all over the world who have experienced, in particular, the Hat Man, um, Shadow People as well, but. Um, the hat man is a is just a rotten. Well, let's talk about down, good for nothing. Let's talk about the hat man. Um, I heard about the hat man. I've heard about the hat man. I've heard about shadow people. Describe to everyone what the hat man is. The hat man is an entity who, for some reason, chooses to wear a black suit. Um, sometimes people could see a white shirt. Um, three-piece suit sometimes, trench coat or cape. Um, he's been seen with a fedora or gaucho type hat or a top hat. And more recently, I've heard of cowboy type hat. Um, sometimes he's clean shaven. Sometimes he has a goatee. Uh, other times he's extremely pasty white. That's, that seems to be pretty consistent, his pasty white skin. Um, if people see his eyes, they can be solid black. Or glowing red seems to be his favorite. Um, he will appear, uh, a lot of people will call him the shadow hat man. That was my mistake when I first uh, presented the topic of shadow people. I put his drawing and several other forms that shadow people took. I hadn't experienced the hat man at that time when I put up this website um, some time ago. And um, probably hmm, 1999. Yes, 2000, it, it was um, when, I, when I started uh, 
putting up the pictures, but in, per- in particular when the book got published, I felt more free to put the pictures, so um, more closer to 01. And um, so I put the different forms of shadow people could come in, and I called him the Hat Man Shadow. Um, and, and people would describe him in, as being, you know, shadowy, because he'd always hide in the shadows, uh, show up at the foot of a person's bed. And I'll tell you how I first came across him. Um, my college roommate at the time, uh, whenever it, our place was just fully, fully loaded with everything that you can imagine. I don't know, we were cursed, shadow people, aliens, balls of light, angelic things, I don't know. We were in the portal in the pits of hell. I, I am not certain. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> That's so, funny. Um, we were experiencing so much stuff, but whenever she experienced anything, good or bad, she would scream at the top of her lungs. And I used to come oh, running full great. force, like, oh, my God, somebody's killing her. <laughs> no, it was just her reacting. So <laughs> that would make night. you jump out of your skin, right? What's that? That would make you jump out of your skin, like, oh, every yeah. time? Yes, like death screams. Yeah. And this one night, she was doing death scream after death scream after death scream. I'm like, wow, I think somebody's really killing her this time. You know, <laughs> I better go check. I run full force to her room, throw the door open, she is literally crouched on her bed in the corner, just shaking uncontrollably, pointing her finger at, at you know, where I was and coming in her door. And I'm like, what, what? I turned the light and she's like, a man, a man, a man, you know? And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, he disappeared as soon as he opened up the door. Oh my God, he was so solid, he was so real. And she drew this very distinctive uh, picture of him. And, uh, it described him just as I said with a three piece suit. She saw a goatee, and I believe she drew him with black eyes. Um, and and I was just like, wow, those shadow people are really getting crafty. So I put that on the website, and almost immediately I saw a pattern changing with the encounters with this type of shadow person versus all the others. And I was like, well, this is this is getting deep, and people were not saying how he could whisk by and take another form and whatnot. He was solid. I got the very, very distinct impression that he was real, and he was about as negative as a person can imagine. And I hadn't experienced him, though, and I was happy to not have experienced him. However, I'm <laughs> with you is, there. Crazy. <laughs> like, I don't want to see him, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did not want to. But it was really bizarre. I here, here I was, you know, I just put up my new website. My younger sister was coming over to the house uh, to surprise me, and I'm like, oh, i got to show you my newest website. You know, and my sister's like, Heidi, i got to talk to you about something. I'm like, oh, but you got to see the new images I put up. And I pull up my website, pull up the picture of the hat man. She screams, oh, my God, that's him. I'm like, what? What's, what's going on? And she's like, Heidi. I went down to get my my clothes out of the the laundry out in the basement of my home, and she said this tall, shadowy man rose up from behind the dryer and just cowered over it. She said, I don't think I touched a stair on the way up. (laughs) And I want to say it was the next day or a couple of days later, she uh, she was driving her car looked in her rearview mirror, and he was sitting in the back seat of her car, glowing red eyes. And I'm like, whoa, who is this man? What's going on here? You know, and, and I kept, the, the tone of the emails and the letters and the experiences kept coming, and I kept bumping into strangers or coworkers, you know, when they would find, oh, Heidi's into the paranormal, I got a story for you, and it was always the hat man. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's just he, this experience was just multiplying, and I knew I had to address it, though I took quite a long period of time. I was really reluctant to look into the topic, because whenever I did, those closest to me would experience him, or they would have the worst luck, or nightmares. It was it was really, um, he was just like this monkey on my back that just, uh, I never seen for myself, but would even literally be behind me, where people would see him. I didn't see him. Wow. Why, what is the purpose of the hat man appearing to people? I mean, you're, okay, example, your sister. 
you know your sister very well. I hope you know your sister very well. Yeah. Your sister, was she a very religious person, non-religious person? Was she into good things, into bad things? You know where I'm going with this? Yeah. Why do um, you think it appeared to her? You know, there's two different reasons I feel that he shows up to people. And some, yes, I think some people do invite him by their actions. I think that, uh, you know, they're drinking, they're doing drugs, uh, um, you know, things of that nature, even dabbling in the occult without protecting themselves. Um, so I, I, I do see some reasons, um, you know, sui- suicidal um, people, people who have attempted suicide, he's there waiting at their bedside. Um, I mean, just, just horrible things like that. But then there are those who, well, you know, maybe there's three different things. There are those who are fence-sitters, who just aren't quite dedicated to God and not quite dedicated to anything, you know. So I think sometimes he, he waves hello to them. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I also think that there are some who are beacons of light that he just wants to stomp out so that person doesn't help anybody else in this world at all. So um, I think he likes to try to bring... Uh, the despair to people, and I think he likes to feed on their fear, very much like the shadow people do, and and negative aliens. Uh, people have reported the same thing. So it's like darkness is darkness, and they all work for the same dark source. So it's uh, it's kind of like this repetitive uh, thing going on when it comes to uh, reports of him, but he is just such a, a sinister thing that really, really, in, you could tell he enjoys what he does without raising a finger half the time, just showing up. And people fear for their souls with just a glance. You know, what a, what a power. Sometimes like powerhouse. (laughs) Some of the stories like in the paranormal pledge. And I think in your book, you talked about one of them, um, where the people aren't afraid, you know, like they don't, they don't have like a bad experience for a while, you know, and they're not afraid of them. And, but then usually something happens later, you know, down the line. And all of a sudden, you know, it, it jumps on them and starts choking them out or something. You know, it's usually when they start getting wise to how evil they are, usually, I think. Yeah. But. Has anybody who has had the experience with the hat man ever bring up the name, though the word, Jesus? Oh, yeah, my hand's raised right now. Me yeah. too. <laughs> okay. Because I hadn't experienced him until I started writing the book. I didn't see him. I, well, I still haven't seen him. I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way. Right. I wouldn't give him the pleasure because <laughs> he was looking for a rise out of me, and I just wasn't, wasn't in the mood, didn't want to give it to him. So let's put it that way. Uh, but you know just, he was uh, there, right? He, he was there, but you, you just didn't look. Well, w- with anybody, <laughs> uh, with any one of the stories that has come to you, has anybody ever told you, Heidi, you know, I've always been visited by the shadow of this hat man. And then one day I said, leave me alone and brought and used the word Jesus. And was that the end of that? I mean, did that yeah. ever? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just the one time. Yeah. Many, many have written to me saying that I'm so happy he hasn't returned. You know, I said, in Jesus name, get out of here. And he turned around and left. And there was I can't I would can't remember what I put it as, I put this in my book to happen. Um there was a, a, a young guy who took a break from playing video games and, and the hat man was uh, on his patio and <laughs> he he said something like Jesus Christ played the fiddle or something I don't know, something crazy and the hat man took off. <laughs> but, but he, used you to, know? he had that word in there, right? right? Yeah. You know yeah. you know when you when you, like the word when you say that the the hat man it brings a picture in my head and I don't know if it was a second or third poltergeist um, the old man with the hat you know it's just something oh, yeah. creepy you know something yeah. creepy like that all of a sudden you see the walking reverend. down the, yeah yeah Stem walking up the sidewalk and start walking to your door and um, well there, I want I wanted to know like okay now we talked about the hat man but then there's the shadow people right. too and what what's the difference between the two? You know what I mean. Like the Hat Man's like you, like the ultimate guy that you know. Now but then there's the shadow guys. Now they're different. When you say shadow, because you know people 
tell me stories like they'll be at home on the sofa watching TV and all of a sudden on the corner of their eye they'll see this shadow walking from their hallway down to the bathroom and disappears. Or a spider or, or something like that or crawling are we, on the wall. Are we talking an actual shadow person not physically what did I see what I just thought I saw or what is that standing right in front of me is just a shadow. You follow me? What What is the difference? What What are you talking about? Uh, when it comes to the shadow people and the hat man, the differences are uh, the hat man, he, he likes to be in his form. He really does. Um, yeah, there's been some times where almost like, uh, you know, little shadowy cylindrical things will come from him, like, 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 like tentacles, you know, like, hello, Slender Man. I think somebody just totally ripped off the hat man and called it Slender Man. Um, you know, the, the fictional character that the little girls stab their little friend over. Right. Um, that whole shenanigan. But um, the hat man's pretty solid. He wears clothes. He has a hat. Uh, he has features. Um, he can come up being quite solid, sit on your bed, choke you. Uh, he's um, He'll speak as well. Shadow people are not generally known for speaking. Yes, they have. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they growl. Um, shadow people can look like a shadow cat, um, shadow blob, um, shadow cloud, um, shadow rodents, and uh, what I call the head and shoulder shadow. Yes, I called it that because it looks like a, a kind of a hulky man with his head directly connected to his shoulders with no neck. Um, so, real and and sometimes you'll see red eyes coming out from them too. Um, they uh, shadow spiders. But those are the ones that I experience the most. Ugh, horrible. I mean, you think you could get a shoe to kill them? No. No, you're out of luck. I have tried. And um, so it, it, they're more of a, you know, shape-shifting type of thing. Then one of their favorite pastime activities is to choke people as well. Um, more to get a rise out of them. Um, what people see going from their, their peripheral vision, um, are actually uh, our peripheral vision is a little bit more sensitive to the differences between uh, shadows and, and light. So I think that's why we're more often and more likely to see them that way. Um, but then, you know, people can look at them head on and they'll still be there too. So it's uh, their their gig and their game is um, pretty much along the same agenda as, as the hat man, uh, to scare the life out of people, to um, even uh, some people have seen them, uh, how could you say, in their dreams, um, crossing over to the other side. Same with aliens, by the way. Um, I actually saw, because I, I, I mostly saw shadow spiders. I actually wake up when I when something is in my area that just should not be there. And I woke up to have this shadow spider dropping down, you know, with its legs spread out, like dropping towards my face. I woke up. It retracted and pulled into a ball and turned into a gray's face, a gray alien's face. I'm like, I saw you, I saw you. You know, it, and they're known for shape shifting too, uh, the gray alien beings, which is something I've seen right before my eyes um, uh, a gray being do such a thing uh, while I was choking another. But, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Boy, the power All of right. God is good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, oh just uh, before we continue on, just to let everybody know, I have two books on their way to me from Heidi, and they're not here yet because uh, apparently they're selling pretty good. So yeah. as soon as I get you get your next shipment or whoever has them are going to send me a couple, and we're going to give two away tonight after we talk to you. So hey. for all those who are Isn't that cool? watching and listening, stay tuned. I'm going to give you the guys the phone number right now. The phone number, everybody run and get your pen and paper and get ready to type this in there wherever you're at. So area code 559-287-8367, 559-287-8367. And uh, this will, we'll give them away after we talk with Heidi. And Heidi is going to autograph each and every one so that way you can... Uh, you can have that and say, hey, nah, 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 I got one. You don't. So, so all right. Um, so, all right. Let's continue on with this shadow man. Um, the slender man. The, what, what do you hat think? Man. He's the hat man, huh? The slender man. Same guy. Yeah, well, I, I think so. 
I, I think that somebody experienced the hat man did know you know just gave it this uh this character name and you know made it an online thing and and uh you know and, and lo and behold you know children are the ones who experience him the most i mean that's when he first makes his mark it seems when they're youngest if he's a repetitive uh, offender and creeping around them um it seems to start when they're you know three four five years old um and just keeps going on and and he's extremely tall he's over seven feet tall generally wow yeah you know just so. recently in the news like i'm talking three four months ago um no don't call in you guys not yet don't call in <laughs> you're already getting callers for your book no calls you're already getting callers for your book not now you guys hold off um <laughs> We'll take your number down, and you can't win. Yeah, there no. you go. Um, you know, just recently in the in the news, I heard where young kids, like high school and junior high, stabbed and killed some friends because the slender man told them to. They were three twelve-year-old girls. Now, this is going to creep you out, you guys. Uh-oh. Three twelve-year-old girls. Great. They were all best friends, mm-hmm. and two attacked the one in in the name of slender man to please him. And guess where they're from? My hometown, Milwaukee. Oh, great. Right when I was publishing the Hat Man book. See what you did? <laughs> it's like crazy things. Whenever I would look into the topic, whenever I would start writing on the topic, the oddest things would happen. And when that happened, I just got chills like, really? This is happening now. Wow. Just <laughs> blew me away wow and um and there was another one before that wasn't there or there was one after that i believe after yeah after like in the forest or somebody i don't know two kids or they they went into the forest and they killed somebody and because of the slender man but yeah i yeah i um i'm thinking that the hat man is definitely out there to cause problems to you know that's basically his job is to cause evil in 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 the young ones because that's where and you know what i i think my son witnessed something when he was younger and i don't know if if it was a slender man or well he's actually right here have you ever seen the slender man or hat man christian no but i've seen videos on okay and videos on youtube so no and they're all over youtube you know people are dressing up like slender man and stuff like that and think it's yeah. funny but it isn't because they have no idea what they're getting into um all right well now aliens Terrible. now evil okay we're talking all this stuff is evil the shadow people the hat man um where do aliens come into play in this you know it was such a, a strange and twisted tale in life for me when i was in college um I'll, I'll take it a few steps backwards um, with my first book, The Secret War. I was in college, and um, I had seen some tremendous UFOs, and I had not ever been abducted by aliens or anything along those lines. I joined a group in Milwaukee that had um, uh, those who had experienced uh, aliens, uh, for the most part, alien abductions and, and whatnot, and I got to be part of the group just because I'd seen some UFOs. I'm like, cool. I got to listen to all these cool stories, you know. Um, so it didn't take long. I want to say a few weeks um, that I'd, I'd been, uh, no, no, it had to be a, a couple of months that I was going there. And I I had a black unmarked helicopter come over my my house, <laughs> looking like it was going to land on it, leaning over and taking pictures of me while I was mowing the lawn. I'm like, what is, is this? I've heard about this, you know. Wow, there they go. I moved and... Um, I had an encounter where, okay, this, this it's a little bit of a story, but I'll try to make it short. I, I, I lived alone. I woke up because I thought someone had broken into my apartment. I couldn't believe, you know, the, the sounds that I was hearing. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm about to die. Somebody's in my apartment. My phone's not near me. I jump up out of bed. My door was wide open, and I was going to bolt for the door you know, just to run out. And lo and behold, there were two pint-sized creatures standing in my living room going through my bookshelf. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's a trip. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I was about to run, but then here's this comical thing going on here. I'm like, what? No way. What are those? You know, little bald-headed guys. I walk up between the two of them as they're going through my bookshelf, and 
they turn and they look up at me and I'm like, looked at both of them like, what, what are you doing here? I'm like, what are you doing with my stuff? Put it down. And I grabbed my stuff out of their hands and I put it on my bookshelf and, and they were the typical grays. They, uh, you know, how they say with the, the big eyes and the two slits for a nose and a slit for a mouth. And, you know, they always say, oh, but they don't have any expression. These ones, their mouths were open in an O, like, oh, crap, she's up. <laughs> <laughs> so I grabbed my stuff out of their hands. They're standing there, and um, I heard more noise in my, my apartment, and I go to check. There's two more in my walk-in closet, two more in my um, my kitchen. And I was standing in my kitchen, and my <laughs> my bathroom door was closed. And the light was on, and there was noise going on in there. I'm like, oh, that's not happening. <laughs> they're playing in your makeup? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not paying the bills. They're not allowed in there. So I, like, I flung the bathroom door open. I didn't realize one of them was behind the door. So when I flung the door open, it hit the floor. Ah, and <laughs> That's funny. So here I... What's that? Well, I said that is hilarious funny. Oh, oh it gets better. <laughs> So that poor little guy's knocked to the floor, and uh, I this other one, you know, all these these grays, they didn't have any clothing on, but there was another one in that bathroom that was reaching for something on the back of my toilet, and it had uh, like these this jumper suit on or something, and I grabbed that little guy. I'm not a violent person, I really am not. I mean, <laughs> but I was just like, I'm asking them all as I'm going around, who are you and what are you doing here? No one's speaking. They're just going through everything, my cabinets, everything. It was just like a, a violation. It was crazy. And then oh, this yes. little guy is standing there, and I grabbed him by his little suspenders and picked him off the ground, and I shook him with every word, and I said, who are you and what are you doing here? And uh, <laughs> the one that I'd knocked to the ground had his arm up as if to block me. Like, he, I don't know if he thought I was going to step on him or something. It was strange. And I heard him say, I'm your nephew, I'm your nephew. And I took my attention away from the yeah. one I had, was, had in my hands, and I looked down at him, and I watched this thing shapeshift before my eyes into my nephew in a baby blue suit and an afro. And I'm like, you're not my nephew. It looked like him when he was 10, you know, he's 20-something now. I like, oh. And I, I turned my attention back to the one in my hands, and uh, this thing was shaking so hard, like it was short-circuiting. And I put it back down, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. You know, I didn't mean to, you know, scare you. And I, this little thing did not look like the others. This one was fleshy-colored, freckles, curly uh, red tufts of hair on top of its big bulbous head, big, large, almond-shaped eyes, but they're human. So I felt like I just scared a little kid, <laughs> and I offered it. You, you'll love this, Alan. I lo I offered it a cookie to calm it down. <laughs> <laughs> Did he take it? Okay. All right. All right. Now, if somebody <laughs> else would have walked in their apartment and saw these aliens just in their house, I think they would have probably either fainted, screamed, and ran out the door. Why <laughs> didn't you do either or? I mean, why all of yeah. a sudden say? Because it's oh, Heidi. Wow. Cool. Heidi. Heidi already, that was probably not her first uh, merry-go-round or whatever you call it. <laughs> I mean, you know, right. why why, why didn't it or they scare the you-know-what out of you? You know, I I really, I don't have quite a, the answer for that, but I, I was raised in a haunted house. So, oh. I mean, I have been terrorized and terrified from the age of seven up. So, I mean, I had had the worst things that you can imagine come my way, and it was, I don't know if I was numb to it. I don't think anybody could get numb to horror, um, but I, I think I was better prepared than the next person to a point where I was, I mean, it was just comical to me, you know. I was part of that UFO group, and I'm like, right. oh, those guys that everybody was talking about. I'm like, oh, my God, here they are. Okay, and, and then you know what? I could see that now because, you know, you're familiar with the subject matter yeah. like I would be and like Alan and Emerald and anybody who associates themselves with me, if they happen to see these aliens, it, like, like I would say, all right, now this is cool. And probably start asking questions. Oh, I probably would get yeah. one and kick it and beat the crap out of it and save it so I can get a million dollars. Yeah, I, I don't know. But 
Um, I did choke it, so I'm. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay, you know, I'm like I'm envisioning slamming it with the bathroom door. That I, was. I, I'm I'm envisioning <laughs> the movie Paul. Okay. <laughs> That that's what I am envisioning right now. Paul, a bunch of little Pauls running around, yes. and and they're and he, and they're like trying to you know do the the wiggle wiggle on the finger, and you're like slapping them. I see a movie here. I see a movie here. All right. I mean, that's what I see. But <laughs> uh, but okay, what were they doing there? Obviously, they were looking for something. Yes. Well, you know, the, the one that had shape shift to look like my nephew. You know, one of the first item I took out of their hands in the living room was a, a little a little uh, photo album picture. with an old picture of my nephew dressed exactly like that. A chameleon. So Man, what it, a sneaky it, it little was collecting sucker. information, obviously. That's sneaky. But why you? Well, obviously, the black helicopter um, was was there. That the black helicopter happened before the aliens arrived. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So obviously yeah. the the people up there, the government, they knew uh, they were keeping an eye on you, and there was the reason. Before I knew, okay. isn't that something? I I did realize that afterwards. Like they knew before I did. All right. Yeah, but My sometimes connection. sometimes the black helicopters aren't helicopters; they're actually right. UFOs. Oh. And yeah. they they do just like the little alien did, right? He turned into her nephew. Right. Only the the uh, UFO will turn into a helicopter. A black helicopter. Mm. I mean, I mean, you if know, that yeah. that's what uh, I get report. You know, talk to people all the time that report that. It throws that's everybody true. off. It does. But they're sneaky little suckers, man. I can't believe. Like, I I actually think that they knew, maybe in advance, that you're what you're up to. You know what I mean? Like, before you knew, you're going to write a book and do all this yeah. stuff and reach out to people. Well, okay. When did know? that happen? In 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 connection with the writing of, let's say, the Hat Man book. Oh, the Hat Man book just came, came out. out. Um, that that um that happened in about nineteen. Oh, ninety-seven. Long, long time ago, then. Ninety-six, this is, maybe. So that's when your websites were coming out, but you still had some good stuff on your websites back then. I mean, yeah. I I actually. Um, was you know doing research on this very subject because somebody saw something in in a, I don't think it was Google then but but only um, I came across Heidi's website way back then and I I've been following Heidi ever since then really I mean she has good stuff guys when did your uh, incident occurred uh, with Jesus what what year was that. 99, the first encounter. Okay, and this happened with the aliens in 97? Uh, I, you know, it might have been even sooner. Let me think. I'm just trying, to, I'm just trying to find even. out why. I'd have to trace Whoa. myself back. So, I, so you were doing the uh, whole UFO thing long in the long 90s, time, early yeah. 90s, or... Oh, oh, gosh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've been looking to this topic for um, odd topics for a very long time. Yeah. Okay. So, obviously, they knew you were into the subject matter. Um, they were in your house. I'm just trying to figure out why. Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out why. Yeah. I think it's because they knew. I mean, they're okay. We don't see everything. Like, There's a realm or a, um, what do you, like a... A dimension that some of these things they live in okay mm-hmm. and they can be around you and maybe you know these were working with Heidi in her dreams or something and they're they're going around her which draws the attention of these other things and then they're they're like okay why are the good guys you know hanging out right here we're gonna go figure out we're gonna go try to figure out what's going on here you know they can't read your mind, but they can see in the other dimension that we can't see. This other realm, well, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y- but, you know there was a uh, something that it had that had occurred on an official level that let me know something was truly amiss in my life um, involving the government. Uh, I want to say maybe 1992. I got a an interesting visit. I had just moved into my first apartment, you know, and I was being, um, I was, I, I got 
uh, a visit from the Census Bureau. And Hmm. I'm like, I was picked for a special census. This elderly lady came to my door. I lived in an apartment with like six other roommates. I didn't know them. (laughs) It was on college campus. And, uh, and there were, the ladies like, oh, you've been chosen for this very special uh, census. And, you know, I have a few questions I ask you. Do you mind if I come in? I am young. I don't care. Come on in. Sure. Have a seat. She whips out this big book. <laughs> and she was interrogating me for probably two hours or so. Wow. And she asked me odd things like, um, she said it was to see if I utilized certain government programs. Do you use food stamps? I said, no. And then it was, uh, you know, do you use this this service? No. And then she'd ask, what do you think about the war that's going on in this area of the world? I'm like, huh? Uh, I don't know. Then she'd ask another official question. And then she'd ask about my spiritual beliefs and insight on such and such and such and such. I looked at her and I'm like, really? Uh, Ah. Okay. You know, I was just answering these questions and just going on, and I'm like, wow, okay, I, I just feel like my whole life and perspectives on everything I've ever thought of, it was just, you know, asked, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go now. I'm like, well, thanks for coming, I guess, you know, and, and then she asked, I want to speak to all of your roommates. I'm like, um, okay, sure, <laughs> you know, and they all came out one at a time. I, I had something to go do. I didn't even stick around. So this lady showed up uh, every month. And I'm like, whoa, I thought I answered all your questions. She said, well, I'm to follow you for a year. I said, well, I don't know about that. You know, and I said, I really got to go do something right now. She'd come unannounced. Um, The roommates that I had, they threw a party. We all got (laughs) evicted. And I had just moved my stuff into the new place, was carrying stuff through the door, just plugged my phone into the wall, and it rang, and it was that woman. I'm like, I don't even have my name attached to this number yet. You know, it was attached under my other roommate that it was a brand new roommate. It was crazy. So when I joined that UFO paranormal discussion group, I, you know, I just had a feeling that there was some kind of connection with this super rare census that this woman said she was a part of. It was like one person in 100,000 people or something that were chosen for this. I'm in Milwaukee where there's like 600,000 people. I go to the group. And somebody asked the question, does anybody feel like they've been harassed by the government? And I said, you know, a few years back, I had the strangest census woman come my way. Do you know that four other people raised their hand in the group said they had the same experience? (laughs) They were all chosen by this rare census. I'm like, wow. So I was on the radar for a long time before I knew anything in regards to any of this. That that almost sounds like... like, uh the aliens coming like that you know doing that like following you around like because they'll be they act like they act like they're um government officials but really they're not and and you know back then in the 90s um internet was just starting off yeah it it was okay pretty much so nowadays you can't have that happen or else you're going to get a snapshot on your cell phone and you're going to be plastered on Facebook. So (laughs) now they have to figure out other ways of how to follow people like you and me and Alan and Emerald and all those kind of people because it's, it was, it's not that easy anymore. Like back then, you know, you could not talk about what you just talked. I mean, had encountered with people, um, you know what I'm saying? So, so right. it, I think this has been happening for a long time, um, and now they have other ways of listening to us and following us. You know, cell phones, GPS, all that. Right. You know, so it's easier for them to do that. Back then, they had to have they had to send somebody to your door <laughs> to eavesdrop. You know, okay. So obviously, they had you tapped out big time. Um, so yeah, I, I you know I really didn't get involved heavy. It was also just a personal interest of mine, right. um, but I didn't get involved until I signed up with MUFON and became you know a section state director with them. And uh, but that's when you know I was already really in deep and you know cell phones were well, out and I was very observant. You know until until I said goodbye MUFON, you guys. There's something definitely going on with you guys. I don't want to be associated with you. 
Um, so, um, yeah, okay. Well, now now it's beginning to make sense to me. You know, that back then, that's the only way they could keep tabs on you was to send somebody over nonchalantly like, um, you know, the Mormons do and to the front door. But it, 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 I still think it might. it's probably not even our government. Because, I, I mean, just like that little alien turned into her nephew. Right. They can turn yeah. into a government worker. Well, and, and you never know. Just show up, you know, and start asking you a bunch of questions. Just like uh, the Bible even has a somewhere in there. It says uh, you could be entertaining angels unaware. That you'll not know they're angels, but only, you, you know, they'll be around you and you'll be, you know, talking with them and everything. And you have no idea. Yeah. But only, you know they, what you know. mind-blowing with all this? I surely just didn't feel all that special to have that kind of attention, you know, from government people, aliens. Soon after those guys, all those little grays had come into my apartment, the next, uh, like, day or so, I started seeing these shadow people. I'm wow. like, what is going on here? You know, it's like, why the attention? Why the focus? What are these things up to? You know, I couldn't make sense of it. I was just trying to get through college through a very difficult program, and actually, I'm actually a occupational therapist, you know, and it's like, you know, it, it was just like, just let me get through school already. What is <laughs> going on here? What, what does an occupational therapist do? Uh, an occupational therapist, we actually address people physically, mentally, emotionally, um, and for anybody that has any kind of disability, um, you know, we even help them, uh, you know, we counsel people to become more independent in any single way that you can imagine. So we might be the ones that will, you know, so you just got paralyzed. You need to learn how to uh, get around your house with the new wheelchair I'll show you how to use. And hmm. um, if you, you hurt a limb, you know, we'll also show you how you can uh, go about uh, rehabilitating yourself physically. Uh, much like a physical therapist, we work with the upper body, um, but we also branch out. We do a lot of psychology as well. So, um, yeah, so it's it's pretty varied, and it's, it's all about helping people in any way that you can imagine um, to get independent again back in their lives. So um, that's why it kind of goes hand in hand with uh, what I one of my favorite pastime things to do is to give paranormal advice. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I always say that uh, I'm someone who's been there, seen that, experienced it, freaked out, found some answers, wrote about it, got over it, and now I'm hoping to help others do the same thing and understand this crazy world of ours because it's something else, and uh, and we can do it. You know, it's like I know how this stuff comes off to people. I, I do, but it's like all I can do is be honest because I'm not going to be quiet about it because it, it needs to be said. And I've been fortunate enough to meet many a people who have benefited from, you know, somebody like myself that's just like, look, there I am. I, I did see an alien. Sorry. I am you know, well, I'm, I shouldn't say sorry. I'm not going to apologize for it. You know, yes, I also experienced Jesus. So I'm surely not going to apologize for that. And I think it's just, you know, the paranormal is normal. It happens to a lot of us. We, we're we professionals. We keep our jobs and, you know, we're able to trust our eyes. So many people think their eyes are playing tricks on them, but they could drive a truck cross country. I'm like, come on. We have to realize that this is just a part of our world and we can pull together and get answers and help each other with this stuff. I mean, there's too much ego out there. A lot of people are so pulling at the bit to try to you know, beat the next person or reveal the best next thing in the paranormal world. And I'm like, and that's why we're not getting as far as we need to. So that's why I really like what you guys are doing and, and how you approach things. And hey, Heidi. The word out there. That's did, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Heidi, did you know that now there's a Hat Man game? Oh, yes. Yeah. That I've actually spoke it. to the creator. Somebody yeah. sent me a link to it. Um, no, one no, of, one of my a, good friends. It's an app or what? An app for a phone or is it like Xbox or? No, it's a, like an online game. Huh. Uh, and it was like walk through a walk through type of gaming yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. and, and I was thinking, man, I wonder if they're going to give Heidi some royalties because they <laughs> should. <laughs> um, we've spoken. Um, potentially, you know, have have some kind of a deal going on with that, but we'll we'll see. It's a uh, it's one of those murky areas of. Uh, uh, I just don't know. It's like I named the phenomenon, and and you know I'm. I've had so many people 
you know, go and rip things off. What can you do sometimes? Right. Yeah, that right. happens to us too, really. Right. You, you know, have to have the trademark, come up with a trademark really the cute name. little thing, and then everybody, you hear, the next day you hear everybody using it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's the way it goes. <laughs> when, yeah. you're, when you're famous, Heidi, it's the way it goes. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. That's the way it goes. That it happens oh. when you're well, out I, there. I know one thing. Like, um, when when she started the Facebook group, I mean, it was little at first. You know, like, like just a, maybe a few hundred people, and it's grown yeah. into this huge group. You know, and and I think she's really helping people. I mean, the the, the people could actually go in there and share their experience and ask questions and they get answers and now there's other people in there now that will help too you know what i mean they right. they stay in there and they 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 can help they actually give advice and everything and, and it's not wrong they they lead you the right way and stuff i mean yeah. that i think that some of this pre stuff that was happening to you is because that they're you know you the good side was kind of helping you along in ways that you ha- couldn't see, and then and the uh, the bad side's like, oh man, you know those guys again hanging around, you know what's coming, so they want to know, and then now look, you know you got these books out, and the books are really good. I mean, she writes in a way that it's not scary, and this is a scary thing when you read the stories on Facebook. They'll they'll give you nightmares. Some of them, it's like, oh my god, how that I would have died in fright on some of them. I mean, you open your eyes and you know I'd be dead, just like that. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't even live through it. And I don't know how those people do. Some of them are really like yeah haunted. And, and that's the, and that's the whole idea. And I think you know, with you out there and us out there, people are starting to open up with the yeah. subject matter. And that's the whole idea because we're not here to make fun of them. Because, uh, you know, this stuff is f- for real. Like you said, the paranormal is now the new normal. Um, it is. And, and, yeah. and that's just the way, you know, we we feel. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, people are going to call you like crazy and, and give you more info and tell you more stories because it's all about putting, uh, you know, connecting all the dots. Because, you know, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out why they are so want to you know, want a piece of you. I mean, obviously it sounds like everybody wants a piece of you, the aliens and the government. So obviously there's something going on. Um, either you touched on something in the past that really ticked them off or um, there's something about you in general and maybe your experience with Jesus, um, that's what they want to know more about i think Look, that'll get the bad side attention or the negative side mm-hmm. <laughs> they see all that light going that way i'm sure they're going to go find out what's going on yeah, so i think a little everybody wants a piece of you and they want to figure out why is this all happening to you and and you know i me too you know i want to know why because you know you got a lot of stuff cool that's going on with you and i'm not and i don't know if a lot of people think that aliens are approaching you cool but you know we live for this stuff right i mean we live for this stuff yeah. so yeah. I, I don't know i you know I, you know it's it's so uh funny because i i couldn't really understand why the stuff was going on my way i i wasn't the type of person to you know cower in a corner i mean i've had my times where you know i was afraid of the dark because i knew what the dark held and i didn't care to look at it that was after i i'd had a lot of experiences with shadow people um and was being terrorized by them. But, you know, everything that I do and that I'm able to do right now and to keep my sanity and to keep my strength and to keep these negative things away from me is all derives from having had the Jesus encounters that I did. I, I you know, I know that I cheated in, in getting the faith that I do because he showed up, you know. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, whoa, you know, I, I skipped several levels in the, in the faith building and, um, I understand that, but it's like once it was put in place, though, it is solid, hmm. and I stand with no fear when it comes to all of this negative stuff. And I think had I not had those experiences, that I I probably would be the type of person that be like, oh my goodness, you know, I don't know if I could handle this because. Uh, but I have no doubts in in the power of Jesus because of 
his presence and him showing up. And um, I'm actually uh, going to be writing another book because he showed up again. And I don't know how... I've, I've shared a little bit with Alan in regard to... Uh, within six months, I was told I had a brain tumor, a brain aneurysm, and a broken vertebrae, the very top two in my head. So... Um, <laughs> And he showed up, and uh, he saved me, essentially. So, and all things, I got away with not one surgery. <laughs> I'm still so, standing that's and cool. still talking to you, and yes, my neck is still broken. Right. <laughs> so, hot. So I mean, so that's, that's, uh, that's the power of him, you know? So your neck is broken because of a disease, or you had an accident? Nope. Guess what? You know that story where people are saying well, you're born with a screw loose? Uh, yeah. I have a very rare thing where my neck has never been connected to my spine. <laughs> it's broken. It is just not connected. The vertebrae are broken. And you've, all, I, I and you've, and you, and you've always had that? I have always had it and didn't know. Okay. I'm thinking there's something that's internally that's going on with you that the people around you, the government and aliens are interested in. I, I, cause you know, like you said, there is some crazy stuff happening internally. Um, yeah, I, you're just one of those, um, special people. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah, I, that is wow. Weird and cool at the <laughs> oh, same oh, time. I've got a good one for you too, Jeff. Check okay. this out. So the brain tumor, I went all over the country. It's so rare, they're telling me. We're going to have to disable you. You'll never speak again, eat again, or move your tongue. So sorry. You'll need a feeding and a breathing tube. I'm like, what? Whoa. You know, so I go to one of the top head and neck surgeons in the world. He looks at my MRI. His jaw drops, and he goes, well, I've never seen anything like it, but I don't think it's a brain tumor. I think it's something rarer. And I said, well, what the heck is it? And he essentially described what... Uh, when you're an embryo, you have these fish gills-like things that you breathe, the embryonic fluid, and but it forms a certain part of your neck. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I still have a fish gill. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I knew you were special. Yeah, that's special. So me and Kevin Costner, when Waterworld happens, we're going to go swimming around and all the rest of you are going to drown. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You know what? You're a hybrid. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you know, there's. I tell you, Liz, Heidi, you're a hybrid, and that's why everybody wants a piece of you, man. I'm serious. There, I, I'm serious. There she is, could, there, there is something going on internally that everybody wants to know about. Dear um, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> to, I, that's the no, only look. thing I can think of. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're like describing to me that you have some stuff going on like that changing you know you're, you know you're you're changing the dna is changing cuz everybody thinks that now we're in the time where our dna is changing our kids are now growing up different and when i mean different way smarter yeah. um you know the intelligence is just through the roof uh and 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 i think that maybe you're one of those people and and they want a, they, well that's cool well you know what yeah I think uh, we're definitely have to keep in touch. <laughs> well, it, it is a strange thing wow. because I found out these things in 2011, and it's just been this crazy roller coaster ride of you know the brain aneurysm wasn't a brain aneurysm it was I have a um, essentially a double of something that. I essentially have a backup system in the middle of my my brain, so if I get oh. a clot somewhere, it'll just reroute itself. So <laughs> I t there it is. That's, that's so that's cool. Crazy that's it. World. That's it. That's cool. Uh, in exactly. the middle of your brain, that's just like right there where the third eye is located, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, I suppose so. It's right in there someplace. Hmm. It's been something that's else. Interesting. So, huh? You know, potentially. You know, I never really thought much about that aspect of it. Only that I felt like there was a target painted on my back, and I've been asking people to wipe it off. <laughs> well, I think yeah. I, I think you know I'm serious. I, that, I'm here for you. You want to come and sit on my couch? You can, and okay, uh, tell thanks. me your story. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Um, you have something special going on with you. 
Um, I can I can hear it already. I can see it already. And they and they want to know what it is. And wow. So yeah, that that's actually. I don't know if you call it cool or not, but. Well, you know, I'm having the time of my life, to be honest, and okay. I, I wouldn't change anything that yeah. I do for anything in the world. I would not want to be in the dark on any of these topics I cover um, and anything that I've experienced because it's helped a lot of people. And it's it's such a good feeling to know that and to know that I'm able to present these topics in, in a different way. I, I do write very comical um, in the, the um new book series, the cartoon series, uh, ficklefinders.com, um, and the other F word.com, uh, you know, to present the topic of faith and, uh, you know, just to look at God just a little bit different, take it out of the, you know, traditional text and just get with it already, because it's so dire that we get on the boat, because the darkness is placing its bets on us that they, that we don't figure them out. That's and right. so far... The hat man is rearing his ugly, wretched face around too many corners and looking at too many people and getting too darn close. And, you know, Jesus encounters are going up, too. So what's mm-hmm. going on? Are, are they showing up to those who are on their side of the fence? And if you've seen him, if you've seen the hat man, you better really get on, you know, your other F word. Get on your face and figure it out, because time is of the essence. I I think yeah. that if Jesus came back today, a lot of people would be left behind, and I think that's our groundwork that we need to do is to start waking people up to the, you know, the fact that there's too many people that be lost. We we just can't lose that many people. We we right. got to do this. And and again, I'm not somebody who's a Bible thumper. I'm not really religious, and and I cover so many topics. I'm able to blend these topics to an extent, you know, where I hope I'm not coming off as maybe pushing a faith, you know, but faith in general, get with the good, you know, because I don't care what, it, where these people, what is, what their background is, Jewish, Muslim, they're seeing the hat man. Uh, Native Americans, they're seeing him. So it doesn't seem to matter what your faith is. He believes in you. Well, you know, I don't know how many people, like I've been reading lately, and maybe it's just because of the friends I have on Facebook, but uh, Smudge. Everybody, man, I'm smudging, and um, oh boy. forget the smudging. It don't work. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, I don't know how many Me people too. that I read the stories, and they smudge, and it doesn't do anything. But then yeah. you have the other ones swearing by it, right? Like, oh, you got to smudge. It's like, you know what? Yeah. All the stories I read, that uh, it don't work. No. It absolutely doesn't work. It's just like it smells good, okay? <laughs> That's all. Or the, yeah. you know, the, the, for the people that are, it's working... Do they use the word Jesus? No. No? uh uh-uh. hmm. But But only yeah, then you'll say that, and then they go try that, and then that works. Some of them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Some of them will stick to the smudge no matter what you tell them. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, my it, favorite yeah. is when they just only have a priest come through their house and bless it, and they hide behind his faith and like, yeah, you go take care of this. Right. It's like, you've got to stand on your own two feet, buddy, or That's this right. isn't going to last for long. You know, you got to stand right by, by the side of that priest or... Do it yourself, because, uh, man, it, I, I mean, the stories that I get, I, I have thousands of stories on the hat men alone, mm-hmm. and then the shadow people. You know, in the beginning, you know, I covered, uh, you know, some ghost stuff, but I was really into the alien topic, and, you know, the emails changed immediately when I mentioned shadow people to just being shadow people. I put up the image of the hat man, and now 90% of my email is hat man and i'm like gosh i just want to talk about angels and jesus please somebody you know <laughs> it's like but people are so overwhelmed by the reality i get a lot still every week i'll meet people even in person like i thought that was a dream i had of this guy why is that on the cover of your book i'm like <laughs> oh great tell me your story and <laughs> it's still happening people don't realize he's out there wow so it's a horrific thing that's going on in our world, but hey, you know what? I'm going to try to stomp them down with a big smile on my face, having a good old time, um, <laughs> and, and keeping Jesus close by. <laughs> yeah. What is your website? It's HeidiHollis.com? HeidiHollis.com, and the other F-word.com, FickleFinders.com, um, and ParanormalPledge.com, where I encourage people to raise their right hand and take the Paranormal Pledge that they will tell at least one other person 
about their personal paranormal experience or interests. So this stuff doesn't seem so out of the ordinary because it's it's time to make a change, people. Absolutely. Now, Heidi Hollis, your name is spelled H-E-I-D-I-H-O-L-L-I-S dot com for all those people who are listening and watching this right now. That's her main website. You could probably get to all of their other websites through that website, I'm thinking. Is that right? Indeed, yes. Awesome. Okay. Um, Heidi, the time is up, man. <laughs> I know. We can keep <laughs> going for another I, hour. I, yeah. Um, we only got 10 minutes left, and I had to say a couple more things, but we have to give your books away, and that's yeah. going to take all that time to do so. So, Heidi, um, I yeah. appreciate you coming on. Uh, you know, that text that we had this morning was awesome, and like I said, you know, I think yeah. we're going to be continuing our relationship uh, awesome. and that way we can assist other people and if we have stories come our way we're going to pretty much send them to you because uh, that cause that stuff is in in your hands you have more you know connect in a connection with that type of stuff than us obviously we hear the stuff but my whole thing here is to associate myself with people that are better at that you know what I'm saying the hat man shadow people uh, because that way we can help more people that way. And, and like yeah, and like you said, it's not about me this, me that. I'm not. We can help you. Come over here, no matter what it is. No, that, that's not the case. Right. And the Jesus encounters and angel encounters. I, I all these topics are I, and alien abductions and positive alien contact. I mean, I I delve into all of it, and it's something I really enjoy. And I really want to thank you guys for having me on. I. I think I should have been on here like a long time ago because this is just too much fun. So we have to do it again. Absolutely. Oh, we will oh do no, it no, again. no. Trust me, we'll, we will do yeah. it. And and I think what's going to happen is once we get the TV show going and stuff, we're going to have to fly you out here and be yeah. in person on the couch. Yeah, we will. I will be there anytime you guys need me. I want to support you guys all the way and see this thing go. Yes. Awesome. All right, Heidi, thank you much. And I appreciate right. it. And we will talk to you soon, okay? Great. You guys take care now. Bye, Heidi. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Bye. All right, you guys, the 10th caller right now for her book, The Hat Man, at 559-287-8367. 559-287-8367. The last four numbers represent the letters UFOS. Be the 10th caller right now. Anywhere around the world, we'll get it to you as soon as I get the books from her because they're on back order because she is selling a lot of them. And uh, she's doing really well with this particular book because it is a very popular subject. Apparently, a lot of people are having the same experiences all around the world and it is this one hat See, person. Five five nine three two Nope. Wait. Nope. Five five nine two eight seven. Two eight seven. Eight three. Eight three. Six seven. Six seven. Tenth caller, Tenth let's go. Caller. So right now uh, as soon as uh, Emerald gets that caller, I will tell you to stop and then we'll wait a couple of minutes and do it for the other uh other um other book. So let me uh, just do a couple of things here. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah, me, me and Heidi's been talking for a long time, and uh, amazing, amazing lady. You know, she does a radio show. She works as an occupational therapist. She's a book author, and then she mans. She actually personally mans the groups on Facebook, and so, it she, is she, really cool. She loves this stuff, as you can tell. And she definitely has something going on with her that that is bringing in all this attention. And right. I'm not just saying from people with stories. I'm talking about the government. There's there's something that she yeah. has going on that they're interested in, and um, and I think that's why she's having all this commotion about her. Well, the um, Hat Man book is excellent, man. I mean, it, she just shares stories of other people that have experiences with the Hat Man and and what the results and everything were. And, I mean, it is really good. I mean, if you like good, scary Okay, stuff, we got we got the caller. This we book got, is good. We got the winner. So, everybody, please stop calling. Everybody, please stop calling. We got a winner. Yeah. So, hold on here. We have a winner. We have a winner. Okay. Okay, okay so, um, all right. Um, <clears throat> you know, we got, like, nine minutes left. Um, I want to open up a little bit. And again, you know, I guess this three hours... That we have starting next month, it, we're gonna it, it, we're gonna have to because we are running out of time. We have very cool guests. You know, we could have gone on longer with her, but obviously we didn't have enough time to because we didn't even do the squash report. Right? Yeah. You imagine that? Oh, uh, like we could have done three hours with her. Easy. Yeah, easy. And easy. most of our guests, really, we could. Who's the winner on this one? Al. <laughs> Al, yay! Okay. Right on, Al. So, all right, long time listener. So, okay, in, in a couple of minutes, we're gonna do the next one. 
Um, you know what? Now, I don't know if we actually talked with her about this, but I'm going to talk about a subject really quick. And I, 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 everybody who watches or actually followed me on Facebook knows that a couple of weeks ago I had my the re- re- reunion. Um, <laughs> no, th- I'll, I'll say it, thirtieth high school reunion. So now, what? Oh, that now that I, I am old, you know, I am that old. Um, He's old, and um, I'm going to talk to you uh, really quick about. Something that happened during that day, not night, uh, and, and really threw me for a loop. Um, and I'm going to open up here a little bit because you know this happened to me when I was growing up in high school and in junior high school. Um, you guys, you know, back then, right now I'm six two, 185 pounds. Okay, that's how much I weigh. That's how tall I am. Back in junior high and high school, I was probably four foot seven weighing 25 pounds okay I was one of those nerdy guys who kept to myself very small very skinny um, you know I did have a lot of friends and I got along with a lot of people you know um, that's just the way it was but you always have those people out there who like to pick on the really weak and the really innocent and that was me when I was growing up and um, so you know a lot of people are talking about it now about bullying and you know a lot of people are you know get bullied at school and they take it out on themselves and they can either commit suicide or they take a gun to school to kill the people that are bullying them right when i was growing up you know i had you know several people bully me you know when i was growing up that's just it's just the way it is that happened to me and it, and it was really bad you know it actually i i i was very upset um there was four people in general that that I no actually three people that I did not care much for when I was growing up and even through after high, you know after high school after graduation after I went on t- into the real, real world um, I always had those three particular people in the back of my mind like I wish I could kill them because of what they did to me that's that's the way I felt. Okay, let's go for the tenth caller right now again. Okay, five fifth caller. Let's go for the fifth caller right now. Um, and as uh, Emerald tries to get uh, get, get uh, the winner, I'm gonna continue on with the story. Fifth caller. Fifth caller. Um, so Come I, uh, you know, as I was growing up, even to, you know, even this year, in the back of my mind, I always see these guys doing bad things to me. You know, either punching me or whatever. You know, and and they really messed me up. So I always thought to myself, you guys know um, the Billy Madison, um, the movie where he is going through elementary school all over again and he realizes bullying was a bad thing. So he calls back the people that he bullied and that one particular person on the couch, after talking to him, he apologized and he turns around and he writes Billy Madison and scratches his name off, right? Because he says, okay, well, he apologized to me so I don't have to kill him. Well, I always envision bad things to these people to these three guys in particular and you know I always thought to myself you know if there wasn't a God if there wasn't any police I would go and I would take care of business and I, I always always think about that trust me I, I mean I was thinking about that all the time well we went to the 30th you know we have like 350 people that graduated in our class 350 right around there we walked in the door, and you know, at every reunion, if you've been to your reunions, they have a table with la- candles lit, and candles lit with pictures of the past students that have passed away. Well, Shell and I stopped, and I noticed two of the people on the eight people that have passed away were the two people who used to bully me. They were now dead. And I, karma. that took me back. I had to step back and it looked like somebody socked me in the stomach. You know, then these two people were the worst ones of the three. And they were in my graduating class. And now they were both dead. And I was thinking to myself, of all the times that I wish these people to die, did I have something to do with this? 
Okay. That's a major thought. Okay. Did it was it oh. was it me thinking constantly daily, weekly, monthly? I wish these people would die. I wish these people would die. And I actually asked God to take care of business for me. And then I find out two of the three are no longer living. Um, now I don't know what happened to the third one. Maybe, you know, it's hard to find out the locations of the 350. Right. So is it that these people don't know that this other particular person is now deceased and that's why they can't get a hold of them? And now all three are dead. Whoa. So, you know, people think. Okay, we got a winner. We got Everybody a winner. Can stop. Who's it? His name is Jeffrey. There you go. <laughs> Jeffrey so, um, so right on Jeffrey. you know, when people say the power of prayer doesn't work, it's not prayer per se. It's thought. You know, when people, when people ask you to come over and pray for them, like let's say a person is in, is on their deathbed, have cancer, and they have 30, 40, 50 people surround their bed, and they put their hand on them, and they wish good things, and wish this person to survive the cancer, or to come out of remission, and a lot of times it works. It's, it's not, it's, it's the power of thought. And that's when I thought, is it because of all those years I wished these people to die, that they actually died. And I don't know if 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 it was me. So it's something to think about, you guys. Um, I'm gonna leave you with that, and that actually happened. And actually, I'm, I'm a little shaking right now because I'm just talking about it. So uh, I'm gonna let you think about that. I wanna thank Heidi Hollis for coming on tonight. Thank you, Heidi. And I wanna thank everybody to tune in. Thank Who's you, got, everyone. Tune in. Uh, thank you, and I, I'm a loss for breath right now telling that story. So. Come back next week, and uh, we will have another good show just like tonight. So, everybody, thank you very much. My name is Jeffrey. For Alan and Emerald, I want to thank you for showing up tonight. Good night, you guys. Take care. Bye. You have been listening to Paranormal Central with Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas, broadcasting worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and on ArtBell.com. Stay tuned for next time. Remember to keep your eyes to the skies. And we hope you witness something you cannot explain. I'm looking for you. You're looking for me. We have to decide what you will be. Can it be true? Can I begin? We Hey